time for us as a people to start making some changes Let's change the way we eat, let's change the way we live And let's change the way we treat each other What's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. This video here I thought I'd give you some tips and pointers on how I talk to non-vegans. There's a few videos out there already floating around. A lot of different activists have their perspective. This is mine. Um, so this will be about how I do my interview videos. There's a few different methods I use for different types of activism. So outreach, direct outreach will be different to my interview uh, style videos. One-on-one -on -one, um, with like family and friends will be a little bit different. What I would start with, with you guys, is building rapport. So you look at the person and you tailor your approach to that specific person. I mean, you wouldn't speak the same way to a 17-year-old teenage boy as you would to a 50-year-old mother of three. So you tailor your approach to both of them. You know, you might, you might, you might be a little bit more relaxed and chill with the younger dude and talk to him like, yeah, man. You know, on his level, you know, you know, you might be a little bit more well spoken with the with the older lady and and maybe get um, veganism to relate back to her children and how you know children. Um, they would never want to eat anything that came out of a slaughterhouse if we shown them this and you know and mothers are usually empathic they're empathetic to other mothers so you could speak about the dairy industry and you know younger dudes you know you could be like you know we think it's not cool to do this to animals you know it doesn't make you more of a man to treat animals like this and makes you a man to stand up from you know building rapport so I would tailor your approach depending on the specific person so it changes person to person um, with foreign speaking language people, so if they don't speak English, you be clear, concise, talk slowly, so they understand you, make sure they're understanding you. Um, the difference between um, outreach activism, I would say with outreach and interviews, um, the difference would be with outreach and more educational, pumping out the information really fast. So, bang, what veganism is, we, we don't use uh, where exploit animals for entertainment or in any other way for medical testing and then you have the visual aid when I do my outreach It's with anonymous for the voiceless. We have visual aids. We have um, people holding TVs with slaughterhouse footage I find that, that makes your outreach a lot more effective You don't have to explain too much about what happens to animals You can just point to it and say this is what's going on to animals being vegan is so positive It's really good for your health um, we don't have to uh, contribute to this exploitation. Really, really uh, makes your job easier because um, people like to make up this picture in their mind about humane slaughter and how animals are killed. But if you've got it on the screen in front of them, they really can't reach for that sort of, it's like a, a memory that's a weird uh, thought that's been implanted through, you know, happy farm programming on the television or something. But yeah, when, when you've got the visual aid. So this is the egg industry. Yeah. Terrible, I know. It makes your outreach a lot easier and a lot more effective. So the difference between outreach and my interviews, which I'll get into, is outreach is pumping out facts, education, canning out pamphlets. You know, you can use Socratic questioning in your outreach as well. I find a mixture of both works well. We'll move on to Socratic questioning now because that's what I use when I do my interview uh, videos. Now, I didn't even know who Socrates was when I first started doing my interview videos. Um, Socrates is a Greek philosopher who, who used to teach people by asking these deep questions and, let, and lead them to their own conclusion. I just found it come really naturally to me. Um, I would say the first person to pioneer the vegan interviews videos would be Martin from Think About This. That was the first time I'd ever seen uh, vegan YouTubers doing interviews. Yeah, what the fuck's up here with fucking Joey Carbstrong here in Rundle Mall. So my first interview video, we did a collaboration together and I read out the questions. And the way I set out these questions is I find out their moral stance on something first. Do you believe in karma? Yeah, so do you believe that, this was my first uh, interview video, do you believe that if you do wrong to others it will come back on you? Goes around, comes around mate, you put bad stuff out, that's what you get back. What goes around, comes around. You get what you deserve, I suppose. And then the last question is, do you eat meat? Do you eat meat? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> you bastards. Do you eat meat? Yeah. Yes. So we sort of set them up in a way. You know, you set them up with their moral stance on any topic. It could be slavery. Uh, do you think slavery is morally wrong? It could be, uh, I've done a rape one. Do you think rape and kidnap are some of the worst crimes committed? Are you aware of uh, what happens in the dairy industry? 
I think I'm gonna stop it right here now. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Like these horrible questions. Like, why, why do you think? Why do you think it's okay to ask people that? And then you lead it back to you know, veganism. Veganism. All these issues relate to veganism because veganism is an issue of justice. So asking them these leading questions helps them come to the realization themselves without you pumping information down their throat. You know, you're just gently questioning them and leading them to the vegan conclusion. So it can take a little bit of practice, but really um, once you get used to their answers, so they say, well, as long as it's humane, or do you think you could kill an animal who wants to live in a humane way? So that would be a Socratic questioning, you know, and they'd be like, oh no, you can't. Oh wow. That type of questioning where it's less invasive, I feel, and it's more, it gets, it gets them to think. And I found it's very effective. There's other activists that do it really well too. Earthling Ed, Banara Warrior Princess, James Aspie does it. There's a bunch of um, vegan activists on, online doing interviews now too. And I found it's just a really good way to boom, get the light bulbs going off in their head. Would you change your food choices after, I'm, after knowing I'm that? I'm going home and I'm changing right now. That's, um, I ate bacon this morning. Oh. Also with approach, I would say your approach has to be, well, I would say it's it's better to be calm, logical, and rational when and and ha engaging in a discussion and debate while remaining as emotionally detached you can. I'm, I, I know how hard it is being vegan and and seeing the suffering and the animal cruelty and then getting some ignorant response from someone. But I would I would I would ask you to remain as emotionally detached as you can when you're doing your activism. And remember, you have to get a, you're trying to get a result from them. So Socratic questioning, ask them a question, and remember you got the, the truth on your side. You have the truth on your side. So it's not very hard to convince someone that stabbing an animal to death for a burger is wrong, is morally wrong. I mean, it, you, you've got um, the truth uh, backing you up. So don't get too frustrated, try not to. I know it's hard, I sometimes get frustrated too, but logical, rational debate and, and you have to be an educated activist. You need the facts behind you. I don't claim to be the most effective activist on the planet or anything, but I'm just showing you what's worked for me and what I've found has been most effective with me and what I've seen with other activists has been most effective. And I think it all comes down to debate, discussion, remaining calm, building rapport, okay? Showing how positive and awesome veganism is and can be. Speaking to people's compassion and empathy very important. Going with the health angle if you need to. Some people are just environmentalists. Sh show them how, you know, it's, it's destroying the earth itself. All these different things and Socratic questioning is very effective too. So all these combined together will make you very effective at talking to non-vegans and hopefully, hopefully planting a seed that may flourish in the future. A lot of these interactions, they might not go vegan on the spot, but you might plant a seed that might flourish six months later. Something to think about. <laughs> something to think about, alright. I don't know. You've it's definitely going... given me something to think about. You know, the, the most important thing is you have a, a very memorable conversation with this person and you leave a very um, big question in their mind about their dietary choices and their morality. Because the biggest step for me in becoming vegan was realising that what I was doing was hypocritical. Alright, so I hope those tips help you on your activist journey. And if you need any sort of one-on-one -on -one help with some stuff, give me an email. I'll leave my email in my description box and get out there and talk to non-vegans. All right, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Well, it's hunter, hunters and gatherers, hunters isn't it? And yeah. So, uh, you just all agree with the hunter and gatherer? Yeah. yeah. Do any of you hunt? No. Uh, used to. Used to? Used to, yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Hunt for eggs May, and maybe, but not for meat. Not for meat. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. no.